In this video, we will look at a few examples to practice working with independent events. In example A, it says, in ABC High School, 30% of the students have a part-time job and 25% of the students from the high school are on the honor roll. Event A represents randomly choosing a student holding a part-time job. Event B represents randomly choosing a student on the honor roll. What is the probability of both events occurring? So in this problem, we have two different events, and they are about part-time jobs and honor rolls. And we're given two probabilities, 30% chance of having a part-time job, 25% chance of being on the honor roll. Now, in order to answer this problem, we actually have to assume that these two events are independent. Otherwise, there's no way to get an answer. So we'll assume that the two events are independent. And in that case, we can use the multiplication rule. So the probability of event A happening and event B happening would just be the probability event A of event A happening times the probability of event B happening. Now in this case, event A is student holding a part-time job. And 30% of students have a part-time job, so I can fill that in as 30%, or I'm just going to change it to a decimal and write 0.30 or you could just write 0.3, that would be the same thing. The probability of event B happening is, well, let's see, event B is being on the honor roll, and honor roll probability is 25%. So we're gonna multiply our 0.30 by 25% or 0.25. When we do that, we end up with 0 0.075, which is 7.5%. So the probability of being an, on the honor roll and having a part-time job is 7.5%. All right, let's look at example B. In example B, two coins are tossed one after the other. Event A consists of the outcomes when tossing heads on the first toss. Event B consists of the outcomes when tossing heads on the second toss. What is the probability of both events occurring? So when you're flipping two coins, those two events, the first coin being flipped and the second coin being flipped, are definitely independent of one another. If you get heads on the first coin flip, it has no effect on whether or not you'll get heads on the second. So we're trying to figure out the probability of both events occurring. And in this case, event A is heads on the first toss and event B is heads on the second toss. So the probability of event A, or heads on the first toss, is one half, because the probability of getting heads is always one half. So similarly, the probability of event B, which is getting heads on the second toss, is also one half. It's independent of whatever you got on the first toss. So the probability of event A and B happening, which would be getting heads both times, two times in a row, will just be the product of one half and one half because we're just multiplying the probability of A times the probability of B. So that will give us an answer of one fourth. All right, and we'll finally look at example C. The following table represents data collected from a grade 12 class in DEF high school. And we have a table here that shows plans after high school it's broken down by males and females, people going to university, community college. And when, then we have the totals along the side and the bottom. It says, suppose one student was chosen at random from the grade 12 class. What is the probability that the student is female? So in order to do that, we should first figure out how many total students there are. And we can see that right here, 164. That's the total of males and females, or if you want to think about it, it's the total of people going to university and community college. So that's the total people. And we also can see right here that females is 80. So therefore, the probability of the student being female will be 80 out of 164. Now you could reduce this or change it to a decimal if you want. I'm going to change it to a decimal. And I have 0.4878. So just a little under 50% chance of a student being female if you randomly chose someone. 
Part B says, what is the probability that the student is going to university? So now again, we have our total is 164, but this time we're thinking of going to university and total people going to university is 71 out of 164 total people. So that would be 71 out of 164, which is approximately 0.4329. All right, let's go on. There's a little bit more here. Now suppose two people both randomly choose one student from the grade 12 class. Assume that it's possible for them to choose the same student. What is the probability that the first person chooses a student who is female and the second person chooses a student who is going to university? So because these two events are independent, in other words, being female and going to university are independent of one another, that means we can just multiply the two probabilities together, the probability of being female and the probability of going to university. So we're just going to take these two probabilities and multiply them in order to get our answer to part C. So we're just gonna do 0.4878 times 0.4329 in order to get our answer. And it's approximately 0.211 or 